My name is Shaji Kumar. I'm a consultant in hematology at Mayo Clinic. I would like to talk to you about the um, results of the phase three trial endurance or even 11 that compared two triplet regimens for treatment of newly diagnosed myeloma. The combination of botasimib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone is currently one of the standard treatments that we use for newly diagnosed myeloma, irrespective of whether they are going for an autologous stem cell transplant or not. Uh, this is based on phase three trial showing that it improves overall survival compared to a doublet of lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Phase two trials in newly diagnosed myeloma have shown that the combination of carfilzomib a next generation proteasome inhibitor in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone can be associated with uh, deep responses in newly diagnosed myeloma. Based on these data, we designed this phase three trial to compare the efficacy and toxicity of um, botasimib lenalidomide dexamethasone combination uh, to the carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone combination. We enrolled uh, 1,087 patients with newly diagnosed myeloma who did not uh, plan to go ahead with an upfront autologous stem cell transplant, either because they were ineligible or because they wanted to delay the stem cell transplant. Patients uh, with high-risk disease, um, such as uh, translocation 1416, 1420, deletion 17P, elevated LDH, and plasma cell leukemia were all excluded from this trial after they, they were encouraged to participate in a parallel trial looking at high-risk myeloma. 1,053 of the randomized patients started their treatment. The groups were very comparable in terms of all the baseline characteristics of the disease. About 10% of patients had translocation 414, 30% of the patients were older than 70, and about 30% of the patients had ISS stage 3 disease. What we found was that the progression-free survival from the time of initiation of therapy uh, was similar in both the arms at approximately 34 months uh, from randomization. We also looked at various subgroups of patients by age, various disease characteristics, and did not find any significant difference between the two arms uh, in terms of the progression-free survival. We also looked at the overall survival, which is quite comparable between the two arms, uh, with a three-year estimate of overall survival of around 85% for both uh, groups of patients. We, in terms of toxicity, we did notice more peripheral neuropathy with uh, botasimib lenalidomide dexamethasone with about 8% grade 3 neuropathy, whereas a higher uh, proportion of patients in the carfilzomib arm had cardiac, renal, and pulmonary toxicity. We also looked at the, uh, the quality of life metrics and we found that there was no difference between the two arms uh, in terms of the quality of life metrics. In terms of um, the response to therapy, we did find a deeper response uh, with the carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone in terms of the proportion of patients achieving a very good partial response or better. We believe that uh, the lack of an improvement in PFS despite the, the improved VGPR rate uh, is likely related to the uh, increased uh, cardiac pulmonary and renal toxicity that we saw in the uh, carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone arm. So I think based on this data, uh, we should consider the combination of botasimib lenalidomide and dexamethasone to be the standard initial therapy of patients with newly diagnosed myeloma who are not intending to go on to a stem cell transplant. Now, when used as injection therapy prior to stem cell transplant, we don't, we cannot really say from this trial that one or the other regimen is better. And similarly, we cannot really extrapolate this data for the high-risk patients since they did, were not included in this clinical trial. Uh, so VRD should remain the standard um, initial therapy for these patients and should also be the backbone for developing novel four drug combinations uh, with the addition of monoclonal antibodies and other new drugs.